Hello, everybody. I realized that we had a big date planned for 8 p.m. sharp this evening. 8 p.m. Eastern. And I just had this really lovely experience with Instagram where all of a sudden I was totally lost, like I'd never been on this page before in my entire life. And I couldn't find how to enter my own hangout session with you guys. So my apologies for being tardy to my very own party. Um, I hope you will accept my very heartfelt apologies. Anyway, I'm super pumped because not only have I not hung out with you guys in a very long time, but there's a few things going on today. Number one, number one. Of course, we are going to be joined shortly by the one and only Tegan Quinn of Tegan and Sarah, which is always fun. I always have the best time. I said the other day, I pretty much think that the only reason I join Instagram Live is to hang out with Tegan. In fact, here she is. I'll be right back. just watching you explain your um struggles with getting on to finding is uh finding instagram lives entry point <laughs> omg i don't even know what happened like i'm like oh you know i've done this eight thousand times i've run a whole little series on it and then all of a sudden i open it and i'm like um i feel what? consistently like, or I should say, not consistently, I feel increasingly confused by technology. I feel like I was really killing it at the beginning of the pandemic, and then I've progressively gotten more confused. Yeah, because, like, why do they keep changing everything all the time? I know I'm not 90, I and I could probably, you know, like, be a little more up with the times, but, like, holy smokes, it's, it seems like I was just on it, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> <laughs> this is... We're, like, we're all... We are all eventually going to be that guy that was at the cat yeah, my dad you know, oh yeah totally the the, the best the video lawyer. to come out of this week the the guy that started <laughs> to do the cat i mean my god anyway I but hey you. thank you so much for having me on ah. your your instagram live and um congratulations on your big release thank you very much thank you for joining me on instagram live and thank <laughs> you for that. i i'm pretty pumped about it i'm going to take I'm going to take two minutes to um, shamelessly plug the new single that I have called Please. Night Future Lovers Mix. It, um, it, I'm very excited about it because it was a song that I wrote when I was driving home on a highway one day. And I kept driving past these big, this is, uh, it'll make sense why I'm plugging my own shit in a minute, guys. So just <laughs> Do you? So, <laughs> when I was driving home one night, I, uh, on the highway, I kept driving past all of these big, those big yellow road signs that, you know, the, all these caution kind of signs. And they're like, it, the sign was like, night danger, night danger, and had this big um, moose on it. And I'm like, oh, God, like, am I going to get sidelined by a moose driving down this highway? <laughs> that was thought number one. And then thought number two was like, imagine the people we encountered in life came with that warning system. Like a big, and enter <laughs> a big our, yellow sign. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, insert us hanging out today in honor of Lover's Day, which I'm going to qualify as being February 11th from this day forward. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Make it yours. How are you? I like that story cool. because I used to, I had a, a joke going with a friend who I'm sure many of you will know, a wonderful Canadian artist um, of many different um, types of art, Vivek Shreya. Um, oh, yeah. She, when we became friends, she used to always, um, like, we, re I, there was a bunch of us that talked about it, but I remember most aggressively talking about it with Vivek, but like this idea that everybody's a, a green light, a yellow light, or a red light. So when you're interested oh, yeah. in somebody, like, you know, like, often we're really attracted to red lights, but they're like, you know, you don't want, it's dangerous. Careful when yeah. you run a red light. Night danger. Night danger. Night danger. Night danger. Night danger. But green lights are boring. So ultimately, also what we should all be cute. striving for is yellow light. Yeah. So, you know, it's like a bit dangerous, but like as long as you hit the yellow light when it's fresh, mm -hmm. you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would concur that my pattern has gone through the like green light, yellow light, red light, green light, yellow light, red light, red light. Because <laughs> it's like almost like when you, when you, 
like when you've had enough of the red zone, the red light stage, you kind of need to replenish yourself. And the greens aren't boring or bad or anything, but it's just, you know, it's not a red, it's not a that's yellow. Very dip that's diplomatic of you. I mean, ultimately, I suppose part of my journey to picking the right partner was accepting that, um, that green lights for me anyway were kind of boring. But, the, but you know what? <laughs> Everybody should have their own their own rating system. And I love that yours was this, this song is about the idea that, you know, you could have a, a big giant highway sign to like, you know, imagine totally. we all sat down and you're, I mean, I do, I, I do this all the time, actually, when we're interviewing people to work with us, I just flat out ask people like, what is the thing you're bad at? What is something yeah. that you're just um, terrible at? Cause I think you should just be on. I think if somebody's like nothing, then you should run in the opposite direction. But I like transparency around issues and baggage and patterns and uh, you know, you know, lean into your strengths. You know, I think, yeah. I think, I think, I think that I'm getting. Hold on, hold the phone, Tegan, hold the phone. Are you telling me like, what if, what if you're really shitty at relationships? What if you're like, I'm jealous as fuck. And then all of a sudden you show up at your interview and they're like, and you're like, hi, I'm Tegan. And I would like to know what you're terrible at. And your potential team joiner was like, I'm really jealous in my relationships. You'd be like, great, you're hired. No, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I know. I it, I, it's totally a trick question. Absolutely, we're always like you know, but but I think, but but also you know this so well. Like you know, we're not just hiring somebody to go to, to go to an office every day. We live with them. We go out on right. the road with them. We share a very small space on a bus. You're backstage, so you know, like you got to these kinds of personal questions end up being really significant because you know you don't want that person on the road who's like always having a breakup always behind the bus crying. I mean, we're living this right. amazing life. Anyway, all of this is, but no, I, I think if I went on a date with somebody and I said, what is the like thing that you're really bad at in relationships? And they said, I'm a super jealous person. I would be like, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine if you had this rating system like full on where you could be like, hi, okay. So um, exactly that. Like, and you just sort of have a checklist of the, the, the you know, the night danger mm. things whatever that mm. those might be like a, a, ra a ranking system of like, what am I willing to endure for the next three to five to 20 years? Yeah. Okay. So this, I like this. So like if I had to choose like a night danger sign for me, mine would be like the, the parent holding the child's hand that yeah. one, you know, it's like, so like the idea that there's like a crossing up or whatever, because for me, that sort of like, would would symbolize um codependency <laughs> <laughs> so i would i would be like danger danger uh, codependent right mine might be the turtle crossing so are you have you, you seen those yeah are you like a slow yeah. introvert slow to the i feel like, like the a, turtle crossing uh, might be a, a slow introvert <laughs> shelled inter, in, introvert i mean i'm quite introverted so maybe two introverts i'm not sure would be I feel like I need somebody to pull me out of my shell. So if they were a shelled introvert, kind of like myself, which you wouldn't know on Instagram Live right now, but that's because I'm by myself in my apartment. So it's actually quite safe in here. But yeah, I well, I think sometimes people think introverts are shy. Although that's why I always say a shy introvert or addict, because introverts often is, are quite gregarious and outgoing. It's just they, 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 yeah. they don't necessarily get energy from being really social. Right. My dog, my dog's absolutely losing its mind. I'm just gonna pop away for one second. Just <laughs> Mine's hiding upstairs, so it's good. We're good. I understand. Georgie, please. And everybody, that is Tegan's plant and bookshelf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen. Oh, somebody's turtle clan. Ah, oh, see, I love this. I I enjoy turtles, but let me let me preface this by saying I have a turtle tattooed. No, I don't. I have a frog. I'm lying. And lying oh, about what my cup is. Yeah. <laughs> sure. What's in your cup? Is that tea? I mean, yeah. Is it actually tea? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's spicy tea. What's you don't have a cup. Where's your cup? <laughs> I, you know what? I, I didn't even think to pour a beverage, but it's fine. Right. I, it's fine. It's, it's early here. It's, it's uh, just after five. So, um, okay. but we had a deal. Yeah, we had a deal that after 5 p.m. it was okay. That's what you said. I'm going by your words. And then I think like I COVID made it even an hour earlier, or maybe we just made it an hour. Earlier. <laughs> it's true. If I'm if I'm totally if I'm if I'm being totally unfun and honest, um, I'm doing um this uh, like a cleanse for the month of February, so I can't have any sugars, so I can't have alcohol. 
yeah, it sucks. It sucks. But it's good. Yeah. I think it's good, like, once a year to, like, take a second and assess your relationship to all the things in your life. And, um, and that my favorite thing in the world is settling down at the end of a long, productive day with a bowl of chips and a nip of bourbon. And so it's going to be amazing <laughs> when I get to do that in a few weeks. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, you can get chips without sugar. So you could at least be halfway there in February. Well, I, ch I shouldn't say it was just sugar. It's I'm, I'm nothing, um, nothing uh, processed. So uh, it's like, it's like yeah. one of those. Yeah, it's totally fine. I actually really look forward to doing it every year. I've, I've done it three years in a row. I have a lot of weird food allergies. Do you, are you uh, allergic to anything? Avocado. What? How strange. How did you figure it out? Have you always been allergic to it or is it a new thing? Uh, no, it's it's a very nice, um, I, I have a gag reflex with it. So the moment I consume it, it shoots right back up. <laughs> and oh. it shoots up even if I know it's there or not, which is how I put two and two together and decided that I never wanted to eat it again. And it happened on numerous occasions. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have lots of foods like that, but I don't think I'm allergic to them. I just don't, I have a consistency thing. Like, so I, I don't right. like mush, mushy things. But anyway, uh, well, I recently figured out that I was allergic to um, tomatoes, garlic so like mushy peas is not your thing mushy peas are not my thing but yeah. tomato and garlic like things like, like italian food and indian food are basically my favorite things in the whole world and i can't I, i'm not supposed to eat any of them i got prescribed an epi pen for tomatoes and garlic and, for indian food they're like you can't have indian food here's your epi pen basically like it was the, my allergist <laughs> was like when i when she when i went in for testing she was like okay, so you've had a, a pretty big reaction to tomatoes, garlic, and red pepper. And she like leaned over and was like, I guess you won't be eating uh, Italian food. And I'm like, my second favorite food, but my first favorite food is Indian food. And she's like, oh, bummer. But yeah. so then she prescribed me an EpiPen, which I, um, I feel r absolutely ridiculous about because I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm that allergic. So I just, yeah. that felt like going over, that was overkill. But anyway, so I'm doing this cleanse thing to try to reintroduce foods in to see what level of allergies. This is so boring. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is what becomes, this is what becomes, you're a rock star. In my previous life, I was a rock star and now I'm a boring lesbian who talks about food allergies on the internet. You know what? I would like to reaffirm myself in this moment though. And um, all of a sudden it scrolled through. I like my, all of the comments went a little frozen, but I've come up on a bunch of people who are like, avocado is a common food allergy. And I'm like, yes, oh, thank you. Because that's everybody, fascinating. every single person's reaction this has nothing to do with love or lust or lover's day or anything, but we're going to continue to talk about it. Um, yeah. Everybody's reaction is like, really? But it's so delicious. And I'm like, I'll take your word for it. Anyways, moving on from our digestive tracts. Yeah. Yeah. For Fair. the record, I don't love, I don't love avocado. So I wouldn't be sad oh. if I was allergic to that. I would trade that okay. for tomato in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my reaction to you could be like, oh man, tomato, that sucks. Cause I, yeah. Look, we're still stuck on the food. I, like I know. Okay, so let's move on. So wait. Yeah. Let's, let's get on to it. It's Lover's Day. Yeah. It's Lover's Day. Okay, so <clears throat> I have, true to form, a couple of sort of questionnaires. One's kind of a game. One is actually a task list for you. <laughs> let's be real. Great. I It started off as a game, and then it just became a task. So I was on the interwebs. And I was peeking around and I was like, okay, what is, you know, what are some good um, greeting cards for Lover's Day, right? Okay, okay. And the ones that, there were some, there were some decent ones I found. I'll, I'll, I'll read you some of the ones that I found. However, I okay. thought what could, a fun little challenge game, whatever we might want to call it, a ditty, would be that um, we could come up with, aka you could come up with, your top five most honest ways of telling your wife you love her in a greeting card. That is like, I feel like I would have needed some prep to come up with greeting card messages, okay. but I, mean, okay. I will do my best. But... Well, we'll do it together. We'll do it together. Okay. I'll read you okay. the ones that I picked out for this purpose. Georgia, the first one... could, you, could you just relax? It's getting <laughs> crazy over there. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got a puppy. You know already. I told you this. But... <laughs> they're they're really lovely, and you know, eventually they s s turn into older dogs. Turn into older dogs who still do <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, a friend of mine the other day was like, "Don't worry, border collies get way more calm after they're five. I'm like, five? 
anyway. I have a Weimar honor and it, I literally said the same words to somebody at the dog park the other day and she was like, that's what everyone keeps saying. And I'm like, because it's true. <laughs> and now my wine is like almost nine. And finally, <laughs> she's just like, kind of mellowed. That's nine. Absurd, but okay. Yeah. Okay, right. so here we go. Here are some examples of the cards that I've seen. However, I think you and I can do better. Okay. Maybe even with a little audience participation, if I can get the comments to roll properly. So the first one, happy Galentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is a good one. For all the May 4thers, I thought this would be a good one. You're the only one for me. That's cute. That's a cute one. Um, I could relate to this one. I love looking at my phone next to you in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia and I don't do that, but that's funny. <laughs> ah, okay. Fair. Um, this is every, what I would assume to be everyone's quarantine fave. Tonight, I won't change into pajamas until 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are all great. I don't even know why I would, I would buy any one of those for Sophia on Valentine or on Lover's right? Day. Yes. Well, and this one I think could quite possibly be the most um, accurate. I love you more than anything except the dog. That's funny. If replace chips. Like yeah. replace dogs with chips. I love you. I'd say oh. to Sophia all the time. I'm like, I love you more than anything, but not more than chips. And she knows that. She's like, totally. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, um, shall we try and come up with like a couple of our own? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's it's good. A little brain massage. I mean, if it's, if this is too hard for you, Tegan, like you can borrow it. <laughs> I'm a perfectionist and a lyricist, so it is a lot the of pressure. Level. from and in Virgo, so it's just hard for me to do it. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of things that are very, like, specific to my own um, dating history, like f ridiculous things um, that I may have said <laughs> in the past. Like, I, for example, I have, like, a rule. Like, I, I think it's I, I would never let someone refer to me as baby in a relationship um, for, a, yeah. for many reasons, but most specific that I think it is a very common name that people use in relationships. And so yeah. unless I am the first person you've ever dated, you've used that name many, many, many times before. And so I would prefer to use my name because I'm pretty sure you've never dated anyone named Tegan before. You know what I mean? Imagine they have them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in which case. You just call you something completely different. Like, <laughs> I love you so much, Agnes. Agnes, yeah. So, okay, so my first what? reading card idea that I'm going to throw out would be, like, um, happy Lover's Day. You you can call me baby today. Aww. Or something really like that. Does she really want to call you that? Or is that no. just, like, you? Yeah, no. she doesn't. <laughs> I, I think like, she might have called I'm me babe, like, one romantic. time. <laughs> no. There. Somebody no. says, I'd hop on a plane for you. Oh, I love you know, that. Like, I love it. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Well, I don't know. Do you have an idea? I, I just threw one out. What's oh, yours? What's yours? We've got audience Somebody participation. Was, don't put Tegan in a corner. I like that one too. <laughs> Quoting one of my favorite films of all time. Um, <laughs> mine would probably be something like, um, oh God, I don't know. Oh, see, go. sorry. Go. That was your game. That was what? I said that this was your game and you just gave up that easily after putting me, I, I threw out, you can call me baby. I, you, the, if, the, oh, okay, here's a good, here, here's a good one I was going to say. Here's a really good one. Hold on. Here's a really good one. Lead with confidence. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I would probably say something like, I will, there's nobody that I would rather ask the eternal question of what's for dinner to wit. There's nobody I'd rather ask of the eternal question, what's for dinner? Where will right. we eat tonight? What will I we like eat it. tonight? I like like that. Thing, Immediately you know, that inspired me. What's for dinner? What are we going to do for dinner? Right. Well, that's not very romantic. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't find. <laughs> I, I don't know. How about um? <laughs> okay, if there's ever another pandemic, that. I hope I get to spend it with you. Oh, okay. See, so you're, you're winning. <laughs> I love you more than I love myself. That, for, you, I, I'll, um, for you, I'll agree to pick up dog shit for the next 17 years, even though I didn't want a dog. Is that too long for a greeting card? 
Huh. Well, okay, 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 okay. You're up in the air here. I'm in it. Okay, let's think. I. Oh my god, I'm not romantic. Oh no. That, this is all that I'm learning of myself in this game. Can we move on? Can you just yeah? Can you move just on. you're in charge. I'm just I'm on your IG live. You you lead the show. What do you want to talk about next? <laughs> <laughs> well, not about how unromantic I am. Anybody anybody else? Help me out, guys. Come on, I'm reading your comments. There's, some, someone, there's been someone some said, good ones actually. A lot of a lot of lyric lyric ideas, which I like. I want to draw you a floor plan of my head and heart is one of the most romantic songs I feel like Sarah's mm -hmm. ever written. And I think it's a very beautiful, I'm very into that. That's a very OCD yeah. Virgo thing. Yeah. That's a very beautiful line. Mm. Sarah, Sarah's the real lyricist. We should be asking her for greeting card ideas. Is she also the more romantic one? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Somebody I... have I'd wear jeans for you. All right, Kimmel. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. I think, um, I don't know. I think that I might be more, I'm not sure. I definitely okay. think I might be a little bit, we, we always say that Sarah's the cat and I'm a dog. So I might be maybe a little bit more gregarious and outgoing with my romance and my show of love and affection. But I, I don't mm -hmm. know if in a relationship if Sarah's romantic. I would. Just, she's a, quite a romantic songwriter, so perhaps. Right, okay. Well, um, I also just received a little bit more affirmation in here, and somebody said that Aquarians are not very romantic, so I, I accept. Oh. I, I work on my romance, though. I do try. I really try. But anyways, moving on. Okay. Where are we going I have now? another... So this next one, excuse me, is a little bit of a game that um, I don't know how it's going to land at all. Okay. Because it's it's like... Yeah, it's the newlywed game, but solo style. Okay, okay. <laughs> Suspiciously quiet over there. I just have to check and see what the dog's <laughs> eating. Yeah. Is he like eating your table? Um, no. Okay, Georgie. No, you can't eat that. Sorry, I'll be right back. She just says. Okay, all the Aquarians who are now getting mad at me for saying that Aquarians aren't romantic, I would just like to say that okay, I just heard yeah. somebody else's thought on it. I oh, think yeah. that I have the, the ability to be romantic from time to time. I personally am not the most romantic. Look, you know, I, I, I don't, I think that there's like, should be like different definitions too for like romance. Like I'm not yeah. like a bring home flowers. No, like I'll cook they, you a meal. I'll cook you a real good meal. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, I think we, we, we have love languages, like in terms of how we prefer to receive love, but we also have love languages and how we give love. And I'm also, I think as a Virgo, we're not known for being super, super like affectionate, warm on the outside, but I think I'm like a real like acts of service person. I love like I cook and clean and do laundry. And when my partner has to get up really early in the morning, I set my alarm before her and I come down and put the fireplace on and like get coffee Aww. going for her. Like I feel like I show romance in different ways. Yeah. Those were all very lovely things. I, I also appreciate the acts of service very, yeah. very much. I'm also a time person. Like I think that for me, it's about like quality, not quantity of time. So like the types of ways you hang out with somebody is really important. Like dedicated thought. Yeah. Time. Quality you know? time. Quality, quality time. time. Quality mm -hmm. time. Um, I just had a thought. And now it's gone. So we're we're gonna go back to the newlywed Marriage, game. Newlywed game. Let's do it. I'm in. Are you married? Are you legally I, married? I am legally married. You are legally married. Yes. Congratulations. I got, thank you. I got married um, two and two years ago. Like December was two years. Um, Great. And I we eloped. My partner's Aww. name name is Sophia yeah we were I mean we eloped only in the sense that like neither of us are wedding people so we were um we were living in we were still living in LA we live in Vancouver full-time now but we were living in LA and we spend a month in Palm Springs every year and we were we were heading there and we were like let's just get married while we're there so we um we did and it's awesome and we've been together for um like five and a half years oh, and lovely. 
Yeah. And it's so weird because I was never like a marriage person. I, you know, I was definitely really vocal around like the marriage equality movement. And I um, appreciate how just profound it is that there was, you know, for a, a 20, five years of my life, I didn't have the right to get married. Like, that's wild to think that like, mm -hmm. there's a huge part of my existence where I didn't have the same rights as everyone as heterosexual people. But it was never like a big thing for me. My parents like got divorced when we were little and my mom had a partner our entire lives and they never married. So like, for me, I didn't yeah. necessarily put a lot of like significance or importance into it. But I feel like as I've gotten older, um, and my relationships have ended, there's been like a desire to have one that feels like really super substantial and and Sophia really feels like that and it felt really you know she was gonna move to Canada for me it felt like we we should like really do it up so and it's great I don't regret it at all but I refer uh -huh. to her as my girlfriend because okay. I, I hate the word wife it sounds like couch <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like everybody when, I, there's nothing that bothers me more and I admit this all the time I find it something that everyone does. It's not a straight thing. It's not a gay thing. It's like a everybody thing. There are just people that are really into being married. And there's just not, it's like a pet peeve of mine when I meet somebody, especially if they're like a friend or they work for me. And they're like, my wife, 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 my wife. I'm like, does she have a name? Yeah. <laughs> she is not named wife. Her no. name is... <laughs> 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 I yeah, I'm with you. I I also find um it odd how we like claim somebody before we introduce them. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's like how about just this is so and so rather than this is my anything so and so. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's certain circumstances, but like if you know you're about to meet my partner, like if I were going to go out with somebody and they knew that I was coming with my partner Sophia, I would never be like and here's my partner, Sophia. I agree. I would never add yeah. the qualifier beforehand. Like, I would not be like, my couch, Sophia. Like, I would be like, you know, this is Sophia. Like, you knew you were meeting yeah. her because she's, you know, I don't know. It's weird. But but I really, I, I don't mean to be judgmental in any, if people call love calling their partner wife or wifey, go for it. Do you. Do you. I agree. I, I have called my wife wife. <laughs> she, does she like that? <laughs> I've also called her by her name. <laughs> um, okay, so back Wait, to how long have you been married for? Um, I've been married for three years. Four See. years. Three years. <laughs> Very romantic. Three, three years. Yeah. Okay, three back years. To Love it. Huh? Congrats. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so since your couch won't be joining us this evening, we will play the newlywed game so right. stuff. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so I have a series of questions for you that I would love if you could answer truthfully. Always. About how you think Sophia would answer. Now, right. I don't know if Sophia is on Instagram. I don't know if Sophia is presently watching, but if you want to join in and like type in little answers, not watching, we're not going to have this. Yeah. Okay. It's very solo. Okay. Got it. Fine. Yeah. Fair. I will, okay. I will tell her everything about this afterwards and I'll make sure if anything I got wrong, if I got any of these questions wrong, I will come clean yeah. and I will tell you, I'll tell everyone. Fair. Okay. Promise. Yeah, I swear. Promesa. Promise. Okay. Really? <laughs> if you were reincarnated as a dog, which breed would Sophia say you would come back as? It's a complex question. Um, <laughs> I don't know enough about dog breeds, but like okay. I, 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 she knows this of me. I'm a, a small person, but I, I, I'm like one of those small dogs that thinks they're huge. So I would probably uh, come back as like a Chihuahua. There. I feel like that's what she would say. But I think that answered the question. It, it did. Okay, great. <laughs> you named the breed, so that was the answer. But inside, but in my heart, I'm like a yeah. Labrador retriever. I'm like a very like big, loyal, you know, fluffy. Yeah, but I'm I'm like prob probably in a weird way, I'm kind of like a Chihuahua because I'm a small dog that thinks I'm huge. Okay. What is the one item of clothing, or what is one item of clothing that you wear that she just can't stand? 
<laughs> so much. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> she hates prints, any prints of any kind, wording. She only wears black. She's in, um, she's in uh, global warming uh, mourning. She's a climate activist and environmentalist, and she's very sad about. So she only wears um, secondhand clothes and black clothes, and so she just looks at my side of the closet, which is full of like, so. I, and all I really wear is black, but she would get make me get rid of everything. She like donates our clothes monthly, and she's always trying to get things out of me. But she, specifically, she hates anything I have that have words all over it. Like if I came downstairs in like a one o'clock shirt, which I don't own, she would be like, no. <laughs> She'd just send you back to your room. She'd be like, upstairs, wife. <laughs> <laughs> wife. Come on, couch. <clears throat> I really like that. I'm going to roll with this one. I think I'm going to call my, I'm going to call people couch from now on. There we go. Yeah. Name a celebrity other than you that Sophia has a crush on. Name a celebrity other than me that Sophia has a crush on. Okay, that's a great question. Thank it's you. funny when we when we got together, like like whenever we would walk past like you know big like billboards or just posters or whatever of like really attractive women, it was like a joke between us where she would like smack me and be like stop looking at her or whatever. Like neither <laughs> of us are jealous people, so it was kind of like mostly just like a you know cute little game when we would walk past especially like ridiculous like if it was like a lingerie store she'd be like stop looking right. at them like I would never be interested like I was like but um I'm trying to think of a celebrity she even cares about so feels an anomaly man she's like a thousand times more interesting than me and what interests her is <laughs> not celebrity culture in any way um like I have this really funny podcast idea that I want to have her be the host for um mm -hmm. called but like none of you can steal this. Actually, I should, probably shouldn't even say this because it's actually a really good idea. But gen but uh, I'm gonna say it anyway because you know what? Yeah. Whatever. But but I think like <laughs> you know whenever you see photographs of famous people, there's always like somebody you don't know next to them. And right. so I want to like have her host a podcast called Plus One or Who's That, and it's basically interviewing oh, the plus yeah. ones or the like random strangers that are always with celebrities, like because they're the more interesting people. Like if you ever see me out and about, like you should be totally interested in who I'm with. Like I think they're way less interesting than me, and so I think I'm like way more, way more interesting than you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I think like <laughs> she's she's been um she's been other celebrities plus one. I'm not the only person that she's dated of 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 from the public eye, and so I feel like she would be e exceptional at this role, but I don't know. Right. I don't even know if she has a, a crush on other celebrities. She's maybe some sort of like weird environmental person or climate activist that I've never heard of. Got it. <laughs> okay. I like this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, name a celebrity that she thinks you have a crush on. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if she would know the name of a celebrity that I could be interested in, but she, I, I don't even know. I currently, if you're not the first celeb she's dated, I feel like she probably knows some names then. Let's give her some credit. You're right. You're right. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. she does, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm making her seem like she lives under a rock. She doesn't. She's a thousand times cooler than me and knows, like, she's she's one of those people like that I feel like a lot of times artists attract around them, which are, like, stable, steady sensible really smart like mm -hmm. you know but but not an artist although she is actually quite artistic and she's quite creative but um uh but she's she she runs in many i met her through mutual friends she runs in a very creative circle so i should she does know lots of famous people i don't know i don't really like we don't i don't, I don't really have crushes on famous people if i had to pick somebody i can't like i'm completely blanking right now you're completely blanking right now? Yeah, like I can't even think of like I'm like who is someone that I think is attractive that I'm like that's famous. And I'm like completely I can't think of I, all I do is consume pop culture and I can't think of anyone for some reason. <laughs> I'll come back to it. As soon as I'm not thinking about it, I'll remember. So just ask remember? me the question. Yeah, I'll come back okay, to it. Okay, fine. <clears throat> what candy would Sophia use to describe your love life? Would it Can be candy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Candy. Would it be Mr. Big, <laughs> Butterfinger, Eat More, Score, or Big Turk? <laughs> <laughs> score. Score. <laughs> Which also happens to be my favorite chocolate bar. <laughs> so good, right? And P.S. to all of those watching, all of you watching, those were all Canadian candy bars. Wow. I don't, the yeah. only one I don't know, I don't know what Big Turk is. 
Ah, Big Turk is the like red jujube inside chocolate. I think it's meant to be like Turkish delight. Got it. That all sounds, that doesn't sound great. Um, I just saw someone put Harry Styles up. Yes, Harry Styles, I think is really cute. I, I actually have like, cons- I consistently feel very crushed out on men in, the, in right. the public eye, especially men that like kind of are like alternative or, or left leaning, like, you know, or a little edgy, you know, and I think Harry's a really good example of somebody who's like, feels feminine, even though he's like, also got this huge masculine energy. So yeah, so Harry's a good one. That's a good, that's a good one. I hate just calling him Harry. Harry's such a weird name. Don't say that to all the Harrys. Sorry, it's not bad. <laughs> I just have never just called him Harry before. Harry? Oh, 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 meaning like he's just Harry Styles. I guess it's kind of like Harry, Prince Harry. Oh, I was gonna, I was trying to like, I'm like Harry yeah, Prince, Prince, Prince Harry. Prince, yeah, yeah, Prince, Prince Harry. Harry. <laughs> anyway, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Harry Styles, okay. Harry Styles, that's a good one. Those were all the questions. Um, oh, great. Yeah, I, I have a question for you, though. Uh, so there's been a few people asking, like, eight trillion times if you care to disclose Sophia's astrological sign. Do you care to disclose this information? And people, I think, like, people like me like to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's Absolutely. She's a Scorpio. Hmm. Yeah. So I think I just... somebody guessed either Aquarius or Scorpio based on how you've described her. Oh, that's funny. She's, I don't really know a ton of, I have, it's funny, actually, I have quite a few Scorpios in my life. Um, I seem to attract Scorpios, but it's my first time um, really delving into like astrology, like this last little bit. And I will say every time I look up anything about a Scorpio, she seems for people on here who know it, who know astrology, she's apparently like a textbook Scorpio, but I'm a textbook Virgo. So we're, we're well suited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My mother was a Scorpio. No, oh. my mother is a Scorpio. She is was... very well alive and still with us. I'm so happy um, to hear that. Thank you. Yes, me too. Wait, so and... you're a... wait, you're an Aquarius? I'm an Aquarius. What's an Aquarius? Like what when's your birthday? Ah, my birthday's January twentieth. I just turned forty. <gasps> hey, thank you. happy belated. Thank you. Welcome, welcome to the forty club. Right? It's a pretty fun club to be in. I, I can't lie. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Um it could, be, it could be 35, it could be 42. It's all feels the same really. It kind of does. Yeah. It really does. Um I, yeah, Aquarians are as far as I we're air signs and we're the water bearers, so like we live up in the sky. We're very hard to get us down on earth. Dreamers often good in like activist and arts. Oh. Activism, arts, social justice stuff. I love and that. that. Oh, sorry activism, social justice stuff, and the arts are kind of the two areas that we excel in, in general terms. Do you and your partner astrologically align? She is a Capricorn. That's December? Yeah, I mean, it's like end of December into January. Okay, my mom's a Capricorn. Yeah, Um, I, I have loads of Capricorns in my life. Tons and tons and tons. And the thing that I notice and love about them entirely is that although um, although unlike Aquarians who are, you know, constantly in movement and in change and in flux and all of that, you know, like we're air signs so we're, and water bearers. So it's like everything's just moving around us all the time. And that's great. And, you know, I'm, I'm at my best. See, I'm just moving even through this conversation. <laughs> Capricorns are very grounded. They're also an earth sign and do not do well, well with change. So like the two are an interesting mix because, um, yeah, you know, that's a, that's I, the I, opposite. I make them try new things and they bring me down to earth. I love that. Yeah. I love that. My couch is a Capricorn. Somebody just said, I love that people are like rolling with the couch thing. You've started it. You keep started. it going. Keep it going. Mm-hmm. Totally. Did you did you and your partner have a big wedding? We had a really yeah, like not huge, but it was it like was really went, nice. You did the ritual, sort of. We got married in our kitchen with the justice of the peace, and oh. actually had a really hard. I've never talked about this before. Oh my god, I feel like it's a bit of an expose. I've exposed you for being married because I've been reading, and nobody knew you were married. So there we go. Mm-hmm. You heard it here first, people. And yeah, my our wedding was. Um, we got married in our kitchen with a couple of, with my sis and a couple of very close friends. And then, and then we had a party and just invited people to come party with us. I love that. Yeah. 
think that's the nice. way to do it. I mean, it's no judgment of people who do weddings. I just, no, I can think of a I lot of better you... ways to like spend time and energy with my friends and family than it be them staring at me. But maybe is that a musician thing? Like, I feel like so much of my life is about me performing and it being about me and it's the Tegan yeah. and Sarah show. And it's like, I don't know. I wouldn't want my wedding to be like, feel like a performance in any way, I guess. Agreed. Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. But to each his own, you know, like this is what, that's why it's everybody's independent or individual day. Do yep. what you got to do. Do what you want to do. Yep. Um, I hear you. Yeah. Well, so thanks, what friend. did you do to celebrate um, your release? Can I ask you a few questions before I go? Oh yeah, please do. What did you uh, do to celebrate your release? Tell me, a, t tell me a bit about it. Well, we, how, what, how did I celebrate? I walked to my favorite bakery and I bought mm -hmm. a blueberry tart and I came home and I ate half of it and I'm saving the other half for post our visit. That's incredible. Why? How big was, how big was the tart? Why did you only get it's, to eat half? It's like that. Okay. seems like I would have probably just eaten the whole thing. It's, Okay, it wasn't even that big. It it was a yeah, it was more like maybe like this. Um, I had also just eaten dinner. It was like my dessert, so I was kind of full. And then I'm like, okay. I don't want to, you know. It's like once you stop enjoying every single bite, I'm like, I'm gonna wait, and then I'll enjoy this later. Did you have like inter interviews or did did, did like were you nervous? Like, t tell me more about like I haven't launched something out into the world in a while. Like yeah. What, there, no, I did. You're, th this is my this only is internet, the outside world that I've had, because I I wanted it to be with you. My God, I feel like I should have got you something for, like, I got you this. Um, I'll put it in the mail. <laughs> oh, thanks. Look, look what's right behind me. Oh shit. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it your plant that looks like this? Oh yeah, I got you another one. Wonderful. Much... They'll hang out together. Yeah, I knew how much I knew how much you liked these. They're called the uh, mother's. Mother Mother-in-law's tongue, yeah. I like them too. They're very beautiful. I thought they were mother's tongue for the longest time, but I guess it's mother's mother-in-law. Feels kind of rude. Like, <laughs> like why are we calling it a mother-in-law's tongue? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to yeah. look it up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it was a very mellow day in that sense, but it was fun. Like, I've been sitting on this tune for a while. So for those of you wondering, I have a song that just came out today called Night Danger, Parentheses. It's so great. Mix. Did you hear it? Yes. So great. I am so stoked about it. We did it. So it's a it's a reimagined version of my lat of Night Danger, which was on my album Achikosuk. Um and it is performed with the Film Harmonic Orchestra from Prague. <sighs> so, it was so, <laughs> so fun to do. The only difference, aside from the fact that it's with an orchestra and not a band, is that I. In the original tune, I say fuck every five seconds in the song. And in this one, I don't. So it's very PG. You guys can play it for all your children and your children's children. Did you feel that you had to change? Wait, sorry, is it my, am I echoing? Yeah, I just saw that echo. Oh yeah, hold on. Maybe I'll take my earbuds out then, hold on. Can, is that better now? Oh no. Um. Oh yeah, there's like an echo. I don't hear an echo on my end, folks. Is it better? Is Tigo Tigo? <laughs> is Tegan echoing? Someone is. Am I? Georgie down. Yeah. Oh, maybe it's a sign. Oh, it says I'm okay. turning a bot. Well, maybe it's just like this is the this is the time where we should say our farewells. Yeah, it's like the, the internet is telling us that it's time to say goodbye, but I just want to say, yeah. this is Georgia, and she wants to say hi oh. to everybody on the internet. Hi, Georgia. Yeah. Hi, little face. Hi. Oh, <laughs> darling. <laughs> hey, um, I'm sorry about the echo, although now it seems like it's gone, but maybe not. But um, I, I think everybody should go and listen to your new beautiful song. My question was just going to be, did you feel you had to remove all the swear words because the simp like the Philharmonic is so beautiful and adult that it feel felt trashy to swear. <laughs> it kind of did. Like I am, um, I would like people to know that um, I in fact am quite trashy in my mouth. Like <laughs> I swear all the time. 
uh, when I'm not on like really professional camera settings and stuff like I mean, I'm on a very professional, this is a very professional camera setting, Tegan. I didn't mean to degrade our experience here. I have no taken. Thank you. I feel far more comfortable swearing with you than I do with like, you know. <laughs> I completely understand. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm not one of those people that if I put a swear word into something, like when we go do television or do interviews, where they're like, make sure you don't swear. I'm not like, I'm going to totally drop an F-bomb. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. kind of what I... But I feel like I'm going to be like Steve Carell or something and then be like, Fuck. I mean, mm, shit. Mm, and then just swear my whole <laughs> way through it when somebody says not to. Yeah. So yeah, I removed it on, on this one because I, I felt like being a little, you know, more refined. I love that. Well, I just, I, I know we, we, when we spoke last week, I said, you, but I, I thought your last record was just so beautiful and I'm glad to have not ever got to see you perform it live, but I just, can't recommend you to people enough and I just think you're so talented and you're such a wonderful artist and I'm uh, really excited that you were able to be creative during the pandemic and I'm thrilled to be oh. here on your release day with you and thanks for having such a fun chat thanks and thanks for playing along as you always do I I appreciate you more than you know so <laughs> I love this shit I love it yeah this, this fucking shit is awesome fucking shit man fuck 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 <laughs> it's awesome love is awesome yay love and thank you to everybody <laughs> who put it comments on the bottom and, and mm -hmm. they're all really wonderful. Thanks for supporting the artists. And we will be posting this, saving it to um, my reels. So it'll be up for a little while. Cause I know there were a bunch of people messaging saying like, hi, I have to work. I won't make it live. So if you're not, if I you're here, you're watching it live anyways. But for those who want to tell others or whatever you might want to do, it will be up later. It's as great. Well. I'm going to make Sophia watch and we'll find out if I answered the questions. Oh, yeah. And then you can let me know. And I am very excited to know what, um, <laughs> what, which candy bar she would, in fact, refer to you or think you're lovely. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm sure she would say score because she knows how much I like score bars. So I have <laughs> I got that one right for sure. Uh, all right. Well, good night. Thanks, Tegan. And good night, everybody. Hope you Bye. had fun. Keep talking. Talk to you next time.